Uh, we will be talking about Project Keda, and uh, let's start with introductions. Okay, I'm gonna introduce myself. I'm Jorge Turrado, the first one, obviously. Vignette doesn't match with my face. Uh, I'm SRE expert at uh, Lidl DJ International Hub, aka Sparse Group. Uh, I'm Keda Maintainer, and also uh, I'm CNCF Ambassador and Microsoft MVP oh. in Developer Technologies and Azure. And you have there my connection or my, my handle for Twitter, GitHub, and LinkedIn. You can send a file request or write me whatever you want. And the stage is yours. Yeah, thank you. So my name is Zbigniew Grubalik. I'm from Czech Republic. Uh, I'm engineer working at Red Hat in OpenShift serverless team. And uh, a long time Keda maintainer. I'm also active in Knative community, so I'm a member of the Knative TLC. And let us start it, right? So uh, we will quickly tell you what, what is Keda. We will describe some new features that we have, some best practices, and you will see a demo, hopefully. And before we start, actually, uh, I would like to ask you a question. So who knows Keda in this, in this room? Can you please raise your hand? Awesome. That's so like Keda users. And Are you interested in being listed? <laughs> so, uh, and who are the users of Keda actually from this room? Okay, that's less. And is there anybody who is considering using Keda? Okay, cool. I will ask after the presentation. So, if you <laughs> did a great job. <laughs> so, what is Keda? So, uh, let's uh, describe this on a problem. So, we have an application. This application is uh, some consumer of some data. So, in this case, it could be like a RabbitMQ, uh, RabbitMQ consumer. It consumes messages from RabbitMQ. And I have a problem. I would like to auto-scale this application because uh, the application is not uh, doing well with, during, in my setup. So what are my options? If you use Kubernetes, there is a HPA, right? So you can auto-scale the, the Kubernetes uh, deployment with HPA. But this has some kind of problem in this, in this setup because if you would like to auto-scale our application uh, based on CPU or memory, which are the only metrics that HPA provides, uh, this might not correlate with the actual needs for our application because our application is consuming messages from some external service, in this case from the Rabbit. So we would like to autoscale this application based on, the, based on some metrics from this external service. So let's, let's uh, see the solution. The solution is very simple. Uh, you plug Keda in this, in, this, uh, in this setup. And what Keda does, it just scrapes metri metrics from the external endpoint, from the RabbitMQ. And based on those metrics, it does the decision on, on actual autoscaling the uh, this uh, this application deployment. Let's see this in action. Yeah, because talk is cheap. Let's uh, start with a demo. Okay. Oh. By the way, we still see we still see like the presentation. Oh, okay. I need to stop the presentation. Yeah, that's it. Okay. I'm not gonna invest so much time here because basically it's a, an application that consumes some messages from from a rabbit and. I'm going to deploy a scale object, which is, which is the wrapper on top of the HPA that Keda uses. So let's do it. kubectl apply minus f simple demo and let's deploy the consumer, the publisher. Sorry. So if I go to that namespace, suddenly my deployment is growing. Now it has one pod, but now has four ports, and we are go not gonna wait until the demo ends because you can see that it's working. I have published some messages, and my workload has a scale out just for consuming it. Don't worry, in the final demo, we go deeper and we check those different things, but it's just like, okay, I'm gonna tell you about Keda. We are gonna talk about Keda, uh, speak about Keda. Keda works. This is the demo for ensuring that we are not gonna lie, okay? Okay, that works, so maybe we can fi finish the talk right now, right? That's it. Thank you. Okay, thank you all for your time. Now, let's okay. continue. Okay, so let's continue, sorry. I will keep you a little longer. <laughs> so, as you know, so Keda is a project that aims Kubernetes event-driven auto-scaling uh, that simple. So this is like the, our motto, and we try to stick to it. Uh, it allows you to auto-scale your applications, your deployments, your workloads, your Kubernetes jobs based on some events happening externally, so not just CPU or memory, which is built in Kubernetes. Uh, to achieve that capabilities, uh, we have 60-plus uh, integrated uh, triggers or event sources, so basically those, 
those uh, components are talking to these external services, so it could be Prometheus or the RabbitMQ that do so, et cetera. This is our web page. And this is the community slide, so do you want to cover it as an yeah, ambassador? Give me, give me my opportunity yeah. as Miniac, please. Okay. Basically, Keta community is more than a small project. Uh, who know and who anyone knows about it? We have several big companies like Microsoft, Red Hat, Spark Group, Reddit, IBM, contributing with the code, but also using Keta. That's the list of listed users who are using Keta on production, and there are really huge, uh, really huge names like FedEx. Sapier, there are big players here. And first of all, before continuing, now we are trying to understand better the user requirements, and that's why we are asking for your help with a super small survey about how you use or you wanna use Keda. And if you can take a picture, don't worry, because at the end of the, of the session, we will place again, but we wanted to introduce yeah. this survey. Thank you. So. So let's go and see some details. So for those of you who don't know like how Keta works, I will just briefly explain the architecture. So there are actually two main components. One is a Keta controller or the operator and the matrix adapter. So imagine that I would like to auto scale my application. So what I do, I will, I will create a scaled object, which is the uh, custom resource that we provide. And uh, Keta controller basically is watching for those uh, scaled objects or scaled jobs. And based on that, it connects to the external service. So for example, the Rabbit, Rabbit instance, and it creates HPA. And then it provides a matrix to the matrix adapter that uh, is being used by the HPA actually to do the decision. Because HPA can use some external metrics uh, except uh, the CPU or memory, but you need to uh, find a way how to provide, provide those kind of metrics. And it, uh, it's kind of tricky to do that. Like it's not very easy, but we, we try to solve this issue. And also, HPA doesn't allow you to scale down to zero, so you cannot scale your workloads uh, to zero replicas. So that's uh, why we basically work around it by leveraging these capabilities to the operator. So the CADA operator scales from zero to one, and then the HPA takes over and it basically, um, basically scales from one to whatever replicas I have defined in my scaled object. So this is, this is very simple. Uh, no, no big, no big deal. We have some admission books also, and we have some other stuff. But this is like the main concept. So basically, there are two main components: the operator and the matrix adapter, and they are doing most of the job. So, uh, and this is the example of scale object, uh, one of our custom resources. So, with scale object, you can you can target your your deployment or stateful set or any custom resource that expose uh, scale sub resource. You can, if you have your own uh, custom resource and you would like to autoscale it, you just need to provide this, uh, this endpoint. It's very simple. And then we can target it Keda or with uh, HPA, actually. So if we look at this scaled object, uh, we see that we are referencing the deploy example deployment in the scale, tar star scale target ref. Then there is minimum, maximum replicas. And uh, then the trigger section. So in the trigger section, we actually uh, specify the, the credentials, or not credentials, but the metadata for connecting to the external service. And there could be multiple multiple triggers uh, specified for a single, single uh, scaled object. We have uh, another optional options, but uh, this is like the very, very specific one for just for purposes. Uh, and this is a scale job. This is our second uh, main uh, custom resource. And this, is, this one is for scheduling uh, Kubernetes jobs. Because if you look at this scale job, it's very similar to the, to the scaled object. It also has like the trigger section. But instead of uh, referencing an existing deployment, you can put a whole J, um, Kubernetes job uh, spec in, into, this, into this field. And you can, you can basically uh, schedule new, new Kubernetes jobs based on the events in the, in the RabbitMQ. This is in particular useful for processing of long running executions. Because imagine that uh, you are, for example, our consumer application is consuming those messages from Rabbit, and based on this message, it is doing some, some expensive calculation, which may take hours. Uh, then the HPA uh, style of uh, auto-scaling is not ideal, because once we consume the message and the workload starts processing those messages, the metrics are going down. So basically, it will, it will be uh, scale, scaled in the, uh, the workload in the, in the process of execution. So if you want to keep really long running jobs, the scale job is the, is the right option because you, know, you, can, you can run the very long uh, workloads in the, as, a, as a Kubernetes jobs based, based, on those, based on those events. 
yeah, you could imagine, for instance, go back, please. You could imagine this, uh, this scale of uh, the use case. For instance, is imagine, do you use GitHub, GitHub, Azure DevOps, those kind of CI system? Imagine that suddenly the HPA controller decides that uh, the pod that is running your specific pipeline should be evicted and remove it. So your pipeline will die and will fail. And it's horrible because why has failed? Has failed due to the HPA controller. This kind of tooling, this, this specific uh, tool like scale job is for that because it ensures that the work started by the pod ends. And it's important in those cases as the CI processes or long-term processes in general. Yeah. So these are our main two uh, customer resources. We have also <laughs> other customer resources for uh, securing the credentials or for credentials handling, because obviously you don't want to put your credentials directly in the scale object, but you might want to reference them from a secret or from a vault. So we have a spe spe special uh, customer resources for this. OK, so this was like the KEDA in five minutes, I would say, introduction. Yeah, six minutes and a half. Six minutes. Mm. So okay. speed, speed, speed. Speed fast, up, fast. no, no, no. So now let's talk about some new features. So we'll go uh, through some architectural changes that we've done recently. Uh, we'll talk about certificate management, about webhooks, about metrics, and other, other cool stuff. So let me start with the, OK, this is cool. I didn't know. Yeah. So <laughs> first, the old architecture, then the transition, oh, and at the end, the new architecture. He just changed the slides, so I don't know. <laughs> So basically, this is the old old architecture. Uh, if you recall from my like introduction in the beginning, so we have the main two components, controller and matrix adapter, and they are responsible for the for the scaling of workloads. Uh, originally, basically, what we did we open a connection to the external service, so the external trigger source could be like the RabbitMQ, and uh, we open the connection both from the controller from the operator and move from the matrix adapter. So basically, we have two connections, uh, and basically, it was independent on each other. We changed this architecture a little bit, so voila, yeah, we, we just opened one connection from the, from the controller and we moved all, ma majority of the logic from the matrix adapter. So this matrix adapter is really just the, let's say, proxy to talk to Kubernetes. Uh, and we, we do majority of, st of the stuff from the, from the CADA operator. Why we did it? Uh, because we wanted to do that. And I can do it. Well, well, we will, we will, uh, we will talk, um, talk about this in detail more later. But uh, maybe a couple of examples. So, for example, we reduce the number of open connections. You know, so for, imagine that you have a large cluster and a lot of a lot of deployments that are using Prometheus, uh, and uh, they are scraping metrics from Prometheus. So our scale objects are scraping metrics from Prometheus. Uh, with this change, we just reduce the number of connections by half. So, which could be which could be a lot. So we, use, so we are using the load on the external service. And second of all, uh, because uh, KEDA operator does the scaling from 0 to 1, but the HPA does the rest of the scaling. And we don't, we don't, uh, we don't have any power to change the actual the, the scaling behavior, let's say. Or uh, imagine that you have two scalers, uh, two triggers defined in a scaled object. In this case, uh, what HPA does, it uh, asks for metrics for each trigger, and then does the scaling decision uh, based on the let's say, largest number. So we, whichever metric reports the largest number, then this is the final, final replica count. So imagine you have, a, for example, Prometheus a trigger specified and RabbitMQ trigger specified. The default behavior that the larger number wins. We have no power to actually change it. But with this, uh, with this change, when we are in power of, of, of all the, uh, um, let's say, the uh, metrics loop, then we can, uh, we can modify those metrics a little bit before we are actually sending them to a metrics adapter. We are using gRPC, so it should be relatively fast. So uh, we, are, we would like to add, uh, add new capabilities, for example, that you would like to specify, in case you have multiple triggers, you would like to specify, OK, not use like the highest number, but maybe average or minimum or whatever, or maybe some more complex logic into, into evaluation of, of, the, of the target scale. Another cool stuff is, is caching of, of those metrics, but I will, I will talk about it later on. Is it's my turn? Yeah. Nice. They are bored. Yeah. yeah. Sorry for that. OK. If you are if if you are not bored, maybe the, the certificate management is not the most in, the most interesting and enjoyable topic around the world. Yeah, but I, I will to. try to do it at least funny. Okay, uh, due to this change that we have done in the architecture, we need we discover the strong requirement of encrypting every internal traffic inside the cluster from Keda for the Keda components. Why? Because otherwise anyone can 
put another application, that's a man in the middle, and suddenly your AWS, Azure, or GCP bill grows and grows and grows. And why? Because you are scaling out more than expected or less than expected. So we need to introduce a, trust, a, a trustable way for communicating. And that's why we introduce a mechanism for automatically generating TLS certificate self-signed. Obviously, we are not a, a trusted CA, but we support the capability of providing your own certificate with your own CA, however you have generated them. But you can use it, not only for, com for communicating different KEDA components, also for the communication between KEDA and the cluster, because the cluster needs to ask KEDA, OK, KEDA, this metric, Hi, what value has this metric? So for that communication, we also use that CA. So <coughs> we, we have been increased the security, but it requires to manage the certificate. If you are lazy, like I am, it's true, a KEDA operator can dash it alone. But obviously, if your enterprise the security agreements and your enterprise uh, policies requires to use your own CA, it's doable and it's supported. OK, I'm talking about CAs, because the certificates around internet were, OK, if you are using your own CA, it's really common that, OK, I'm using TLS, but the, rabbit, the, the server, the Prometheus or Rabbit server is using my own certificate. So the standard libraries in any language write an error. If the certificate is not in the trusted CA store from the container, an error will be raised. So in KEDA, we have added the support for providing your own CAs. In this way, you can use your own CA in a full validated communication and encrypted way in the scalers, which is another improvement from security point of view. <coughs> and the last, but not the least, point about certificate is that we have made optionally or setable the minimum TLS version. So nowadays, latest versions of KEDA ensures that your encrypted communications is using at least TLS 1.2, which is the minimum secure TLS encryption protocol that exists. You can use your own, it's an option, you can modify, but at least you are safe. We are moving forward, we are designing the roadmap for making KEDA safe, safe as default. In case of not configuring anything, KEDA will be safe and will fulfill all security requirements because it's not interesting, it's not necessary. And if we can do it, why should we delegate? Or why should we enforce you to, doing, to do these boring stuff? <coughs> oh, webhooks, validation. One really common topic in GitHub repository in the issues are things that, for me, as a KEDA maintainer, as, and as a person really focused on auto-scaling, sounds super clear, but my experience says that it's not obvious. It's not obvious at all. How many of you know that an, a, a workload in Kubernetes is not important, deployment, stateful set, custom resource, whatever. How, many, how much of you know that you can only have one HPA Per workload, you can have multiple, but if you have if you have, uh, you can, if you have multiple, it won't work correctly because <coughs> uh, those two HPAs will be fighting. Uh, exactly. If you want to scale, for instance, not in KEDA, in Kubernetes in general, if you want to scale based on met on CPU and memory, you should mix both metrics in the same HPA. If you spawn, if you deploy two HPA, the behavior will be crazy, and those things could seem. Obvious, but they are not obvious at all. Another feature that we have introduced is a validation, a validating webhooks for those things. The validation webhooks will block any scale object that try to scale or that try to control a workload that is already controlled by another scale object or by another HPA. And also, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> the same validation webhooks, validating webhooks will check, obvious, ob uh, apart from that, if you, are going, if you want to use CPU or memory scalers, you need to have those values in the request of the pod. If you don't have them defined, the HPA will do nothing. 
nothing at all. So why, why wait until that scenario if we can catch during the deployment thanks to this validation? Cool. <coughs> Too much slides in a row. Yeah, it's my moment. OK, we have been working also in the observability because, OK, I have shown you, Keda works. It's not a joke. We don't record the demo, it's a live demo. Keda works. But how can I check it? What can I do if, it, if Keda is failing? How could I notice that Keda is failing? OK, in, in, for in, during the last year, we have been working hard also in the observability of Keda. We have added some Prometheus metric. Yeah, and you are in the middle, bro. <laughs> I was the bro. I need more states. It's not enough. We are <laughs> no, Israel. I'm joking. Should come here. Come here. We have we have added a lot of metrics because we think, and we are not the owner of the truth. That's why we did we prepare the survey. We say, attend GitHub issues, Slack discussions because we want feedback. But we have added these metrics just for ensuring that Keda works, and those are available. Just scrapping them from the server. Cool. Let's move forward. <coughs> so these were some these were some new features that we introduced recently, and let's talk about some best practices just real quick, and then let's go to the demo. So drink properly because you will be doing the demo, right? So polling interval. This is uh, interesting, uh, interesting uh, stuff. So this is like an option in uh, in scaled object, and the polling interval is because if you recall, there are those two components, operator and metric server. The polling interval is only for the operator. So it tells how, how uh, like what is the frequency of, of the checks from, from Keda to the external service. So let's say I would like to check my, my RabbitMQ queue, uh, like uh, every 15 seconds. So this is what the polling interval is for, but it is only for zero to one scaling. It is not, uh, it is, uh, not uh, related to the relevance to the HPA or so to the one to n scaling. Because as I told you before, like the HPA uh, requests the metrics uh, on its own. So, and this by default is 15 seconds. There is an option for it, and, but this option needs to be needs to be set on the on the Kubernetes platform. So, if you are not um, managing the platform your, your own, you cannot change this uh, this period. So, it means that if you, for example, would like to make the auto scaling, let's say, quicker, so you would like to scale faster, so you would like to decrease this this limit, you have no no option if you don't manage the manage the cluster. So. How you can how you can bypass this? So that's why we did the move from like let's say the architectural change. So now we are in a full control of the of the metrics flowing into the system. So uh, we have a new feature which is called metrics caching, and basically it means if you enable this setting, you can enable it per each uh, uh, trigger. So it means that uh, the the only only request for a metric is coming uh, during the polling interval. And then we are caching the metrics in the operator. And uh, when HPA requests those metrics, for example, if every 15 seconds, but we are have, we have the polling interval set for one minute. So we only uh, query the metrics uh, to the external system every minute. And uh, the cache is being hit in this case. And uh, we, we are also saving, saving like the tra network traffic. So it's useful to think about these options if you are designing your, 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 your solution. Because for example, some solutions don't require that, that uh, fast uh, fast, or like let's say startup, startup time for the scaling. Th there might be some delay, so you might want to extend th this, these options. Maybe other, uh, other, other workloads require, like let's say, uh, higher frequency. So you, want, you would like to really tweak these this kind of settings. Uh, then uh, there is a, another, another cool, cool recommendation, which is called uh, HPA scaling behavior. There's, it's a, like an advanced field in the, in the HPA settings. So it is HPA building, building stuff. And there are two, two options. There is a stabilization window, which is good uh, if you want to prevent like flapping on the number of, of, of replicas. So let's say my, uh, my metrics reports, for example, scale to one replica, then to 10, one, 10. You would like to avoid, avoid the situation, so you can, you, can, uh, you, can, uh, you can specify the stabilization window, and it prevents this kind of behavior. It makes the scaling smooth. Also, you can define the scaling policies, both for scaling out uh, and in. And Basically, you, you, can, you can modify the algorithm to scale maybe a little bit faster or slower, so increasing or decreasing the numbers of replicas. So I definitely recommend uh, you using these settings in your, in your environment. And this is an uh, interesting topic, and I would like you to talk yeah, about it. Yeah, this is, this is another interesting topic. 
And maybe it's not a best practice. We didn't know the best place to put or to explain this, but, but it's important because uh, we have introduced support for, for float numbers. But if you don't know, I can tell you, Kubernetes doesn't support floats. Floats, float numbers, they are not supported at all. Kubernetes changed the scale. If you want to say 1.5, Kubernetes will use 100 milli in general, milli cores, milli, whatever. But the, 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 the scale is changed. And that's why you could see in your HPA something weird like 4,800 M slash five. What that means? That means 4.8 slash five. Why we explain this? Because we have noticed in our issues and in our community channels that there are a lot of questions about this, and this is <coughs> due to this, not limitation, due to this design in Kubernetes, but due to this, the support for floating numbers as a, a value. For instance, you could say, I want to scale based on, or the, the, the value that I want to reach is 0 0.5 potatoes per replica. And why per replica? Because there is another important topic that we have support and we want to explain, and it's the metric type. And this is not part of KEDA itself, because this, this is extremely related with the HPA. You will see this in the HPA directly, not in KEDA. <coughs> the metric types. Do you know the metric types in Kubernetes? Which kind of metric types do you have available in Kubernetes in general? Never? Nah, nobody knows? OK, I, I don't, don't worry. Me neither. That's why I wrote them. We have the average type, which is the most obvious. It's like, OK, my pod can process five messages at once in parallel. So I want to have five messages in average per pod. So if I have 10 messages, I will have two pods. Easy to understand. The second one is value. Value is a cust not a custom, it's another formula like three, three, uh, four, I don't remember the value as last 20, I don't remember. But you have the link to the documentation where it's properly explained, the specific formula, but you have another way to calculate because maybe your workload needs other scaling way than just the average. And if you are using CPU or memory, you probably, I recognize utilization because it's the metric, it's the common metric for CPU and memory. For instance, if you see the percentage in the HPA, it's because you are using utilization. If you will be using any other, you will not be the percentage. So this is not part of us best practices, but it's important to share this knowledge because you, will, you can face with these values, metric types, and it's important to know how it works, because it's part of the internal working way of Kubernetes and Keda. Exactly. Awesome. <coughs> so. I have to do the another demo. Oh. Yes. I don't earn enough. Oh, sorry. I have a poor one. Go ahead. Oh. No worries. Sorry. OK. Now I'm going a bit deeper in the process. We have a deployment, they are really normal deployment. You can find this example in, in, Keda, in, Keda, in Keda org organization in GitHub. And I have the scale object, as Svignac has explained. But I have another important point he has explained. We have other CRDs. In this case, the other CRD is trigger authentication. What are we doing with that trigger authentication? We are using a native, a, a native integration, in this case, with Azure Keyboard for pulling the secret. So the connection string to that rabbit isn't in the cluster. It's on-demand pull from Keda. And how can we connect with that, with that Azure Keyboard? We are using managed identities. If you don't know uh, what are managed identities, yeah, they are known as Worldwide Identity Federation in Azure and GCP, and EAM role assumption could be in AWS, is the most secure way that you can use to connect 
through the cloud provider infrastructure because because it generates <coughs> it generates a single token based on the identity. We and should speed up. We should speed up. Uh, okay, I know sorry. that you love talking. No problem at all. Okay. So yeah. This is the rabbit. If you check, rabbit is not secure because I have generated my own self uh, self signed certificate. So as I, as I have explained it, obviously Keda will fail. But five minutes, nice, sorry. But in this case, I have the secret with the CA. The CA is registered in Keda. So Keda trust on this CA, and obviously when I run the, the same sample, in this case, I'm gonna publish to the other queue. I can see that the scaling start again. Now from zero to one, and I can I can keep it there, keep it there for the future. But we have a bit rust. I will jump to the next one. Yeah. How can I check? I show you that we expose metric. We want to expose metric to monitor how Keda is working because it's important. It's critical. If you need to answer and your pot is down because Keda hasn't scaled your workload, you are failing in production, and not, that's not acceptable. We need to figure out how to do it, and in this case, <coughs> we expose metric. This dashboard is a totally demo dashboard. Let me put 30 minutes. But it's a, a, a sample about the metrics that you could use. Those are there. You only need to scrape them using Prometheus and explode them, use them in your alert, in your monitor dashboards, wherever you want. Cool. Maybe let's go back to the presentation. Yeah. This is just the future, future topic. We don't have time, so this is just the list. Maybe you can read it later on. But basically, this is like a, related to our architectural changes. So this is what, what's coming. And this is the end of the session. So please, if you are CADA users, please, please uh, take your time to, to fill, this, uh, fill this survey because it will help, you, help us to prioritize what are the, like, the features that you would like to uh, see in the, in, the, in the CADA and what you have to, to improve. And there is also the QR code for the session feedback. So please, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them now. I'm sorry for speeding up the end of the demo. Sorry. My fault. Yeah, one microphone here. Can we have a mic? In, in here. Hi. <laughs> Thanks. So anybody has a question in the meantime? So this, okay. This guy. Hello, good. Um, so you mentioned about the validating webhook stuff. Um, what happens if you deploy your, so if I'm deploying everything with a Helm chart with Flux or whatever, and everything deploys at once, and it's checking the deployment for CPU and RAM being there. Yeah. What happens if the yeah, the Keda resource um, is deployed slightly before the deployment? Does it fail? Um, it fails. Yeah, okay. Yeah, but in general, Helm first deploy, uh, spawn the deploys and then spawn the scale objects because they are custom CRDs. Yeah. Yeah. But if, if you have any edge case that is not supported, you could use uh, webhooks. Webhooks, no, sorry, uh, Helm hooks for Slowing the uh, slowing the the scale object uh, deployment or deploying the cluster. Anybody any other question? <laughs> yeah. Over here. there. Oh. Okay. Well, I, I go next until the mic yeah, sure. goes there. Uh, regarding the Prometheus metrics. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Regarding the Prometheus metrics, uh, you showed the dashboard. Do you have a community dashboard that uh, is we available? Have, we have a dashboard in the, in the repository that isn't, isn't this dashboard. I created this dashboard for this demo, but it's based on this dashboard. So you have the starting point, and you can iterate from that starting point. But we plan, plan to extend this, this dashboard. All right, thanks. <laughs>